just want to welcome you and uh, we can proceed with the, the discussion. So um, we're now taking questions. Remember, please, we'll keep it to one question per media house. So we'll begin with uh, Gaki. Uh, Mr. President, my name is Gaki. I work with the East African newspaper. Uh, my question relates to Gachacha courts. Yesterday, Mr. President, you did acknowledge that uh, Gachacha courts, impressively successful as they have been, haven't been without imperfections. Would you please, if you don't mind, elaborate what the government has identified as the key imperfections and what sorts of mechanisms have been put in place or will be put in place to address them. Thank you. And then we'll have Marcel. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is uh, Marcel Msinari, Business Daily Newspaper. Uh, Mr. President, uh, UN Rwanda relations have been characterized by bickering and accusations for the past two decades. Yet, you know, we keep uh, forces. Well, only, I think, five decades. <laughs> Thank you for the correction, Mr. President. Yet we, we keep our forces there for peacekeeping. Why do we live this double life? Why wouldn't Rwanda decide either to say, call it a day with the UN, or at least to demand uh, very, uh, very important changes in the UN system? Uh, uh, Mr. President, if you, if you accept uh, the, the uh, small groups, non-state actors, are now able to deal, uh, to destabilize whole nations. We've seen that in Somalia. We've seen that in, in the DRC. We've seen that almost everywhere, where Boko Haram in Nigeria and all that. The UN seems not to be able to cope with these issues. And so, why would we stay in in an organization that doesn't seem to do its work and has no future. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Rugendo? Yeah, Mr. President, I'm, I'm very tall as well to stand up. Uh, Your Excellency, my name is Rugendo. I'm from Red Pepper in Uganda. My question, I, I, I wish to take you to, to DRC. Recently, um, Rwanda was accused of supporting the rebels uh, allied to General Ntaganda. Rwanda denied, but I want to ask, in your view, does Rwanda have issues and concerns in that part of the region, in that part of the country, or with the DRC government? Mm -hmm. We take this. Um, let me start with a question uh, on Gachacha and, and uh, the imperfections. Um, yes, I, I think it was put clearly uh, yesterday. The success uh, of the process and, and uh, how the courts performed and this is in relation to the results. I was talking about the results when it comes to, to progress, to success, and, and so on. And, and results measured this way. It's not just about numbers that of, of cases that were processed. I think it is also the quality of the process itself and how this resulted in our country benefiting from stability arising out of that process. Stability, again, relating to how our people were able to overcome 
these differences of our past, accept to listen to each other, to speak with one another, and to agree on many things that are in their interest, in the, and, and in the interest especially in terms of uh, a better future for them. I think Gachacha did a lot of that, brought together uh, these communities and our society at large because it was a medium of you know, exchange of ideas and getting a feel of each other and talking about responsibilities, the victims, the perpetrators, and together moving forward. Now, the imperfections that uh, were, were talked about or acknowledged arise out of saying this process basically uh, was a process built on certain uh, traditional systems and values, things that may be applied decades and centuries ago in our society, being applied in modern times, and therefore there was, so to speak, some kind of clash where people said, no, this doesn't work today, uh, something else works. But we also discovered that even the modern institutions and systems, in fact, have more imperfections when it comes to dealing with some of these situations as uh, we witnessed here. And in fact, that's why we went to these old uh, traditions of dealing with issues in the first place. It's because the modern institutions could not apply and were not going to serve us and give us the results. So if we are talking about imperfections, there are imperfections everywhere, all through. But at the end of the day, you choose what works for you and what works in that situation. That's the most important thing. And we chose Gachacha because of all things we could have done to deal with our problems, particularly these problems arising out of genocide and the history of it and, and, and so on and so forth. No, nothing else was going to work for us. Uh, so we, 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 we proceeded with the, uh, 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 the, the institutions that had these imperfections I've talked about, but less imperfections and that were going to give us better results than to just proceed with the modern institutions that had even more imperfections and were going to give us less results. And that's why I even brought up the comparison of how ICTR has performed vis-a-vis -vis the cases uh, of genocide I pointed out to you. So we, we deal with the situations of imperfection all through. So in the in the end, you have to choose what works for you, what you think will work for you. So we've, we've chosen this and we tested it and we are, we are the ones responsible for saying, well, it has delivered this much or it hasn't delivered that much. So you, you can have your own take on that, but that is mine on, on this. Um, the second question, uh, UN, Rwanda, and, and so on and so forth. Um, why, why, why leave this kind of double life, as, as you said? 
I, I, I wish I didn't have to. But again, the, the, the world we live in, Marcel, as you know, is, uh, is a world you, you, full of imperfections, again, that we have uh, probably talked about. And um, the, the problems of Rwanda, and particularly the problems of Rwanda and the UN, um, have a long history, yes. That's true, but I think there are other problems um, that have affected other countries as well. And that's why the other day, when uh, other questions like these came up, uh, relating to Congo and so on, which we'll talk about in a moment, because it also comes up in the third question, in the following question. That's why the other day I was telling you sometimes the world behaves as if, uh, and particularly the UN, as if the problems of Congo uh, as a world have been caused by Rwanda or should actually be Rwanda's responsibility. And I was reminding people that uh, even before I was born, there were these problems in the Congo. So before so many people in this room, Rwandese, were born, including me, we had problems in the Congo, and problems relating to the UN and the colonial history, as you may have it. And from that time, nothing has changed between then and now. So, with, with, with the UN and Rwanda, you remember we have another issue that I, I can bring out. Relating even to, 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 to the tragic uh, history of our country, when we had genocide here. The uh, UN was involved, by the way. It was not, not, not involved in, well, I was going to say not involved in the killings, but it depends on what you mean. Because if you don't act when you should have acted uh, to, to prevent something, and when you were supposed to, I think there is some level of responsibility over that. But you remember uh, that history uh, of uh, UN's involvement in Rwanda before, during, and after genocide, and, and all the failures that uh, we witnessed uh, throughout that period. But at, uh, at the end of the day, UN is a body that serves or said or expected to serve all of us, and we are members of the UN. And again, this is what brings the, the kind of, uh, creates the kind of complex uh, situation. Sometimes when you mean the UN or the international community, I'm not always sure we, we fully understand or we understand the same way what we are talking about. Sometimes it really means nothing. It means everything, but in the end it means nothing. You, you, you look around and say, but who is the UN? You know, and, and then you say, oh, so maybe it's me and you. And... But when it comes to holding people responsible, you don't know who the UN is. And then when you talk about international community, the, 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 the definition is elastic. It's something you can play with as much as you want and to the extent you want. When it comes to responsibility, you really don't know who to blame. But at the same time, these are things that exist. And these are things that exist that involve us as well. 
So I would rather, with that question, I would separate uh, things where there is the UN, and then as we grapple with the definition and what it means and what we, we can do with it and so on and so forth, we go along with it because we, we are even told we are, we, are, we are members of that, we are part of it. We can make some contribution maybe that uh, together with others we can make a difference. But at the same time, is the other part, which is now Rwanda, that we specifically are responsible, uh, 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 are our responsibility. Rwanda is our responsibility. All of us, uh, Rwandans, and, and the others who wish to be associated with that. Uh, so we, we, we have to specifically concentrate on, 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 on our responsibilities and, uh, as Rwandans, as, as, as Rwanda. So we have Rwanda and the UN uh, in that uh, busy but not clear uh, interaction. So we, we try to play uh, our part uh, as relates us to the rest of the world and through the UN or with the UN, and also keep making a reference to the UN as uh, that body where we also make a contribution. It's a, it's a complex kind of thing. So that, that's, that's why there is this kind of life that we have to live. It's, it's, uh, the world is not, uh, I wish it was as uh, uh, straight as, as, uh, as maybe everyone would uh, find easier. Um, but that's not the case. So, DRC, uh, Rujendo, with the DRC, it's, it's a complex thing again. I really don't know where to start from and where to end, but I'll I, I try. Um, I cannot understand, though, even as I try to, to speak to this question, why in the world, and, and again re relating to the, the, the previous quest question, I, I, I don't know where this comes from, and I don't know why it is a kind of uh, storyline that is always, you know, um, taken across all kinds of discussions um, that Rwanda comes to bear almost full responsibility for everything that happens in the Congo. I've never understood this, but that's the case. It's as if Congo does not exist on its own or does not have its own problems that should be addressed by the Congolese themselves and whoever else wants to deal with that and so on and so forth. No. A situation has been created where Congo's problems are Rwanda's problems and not only that, actually they have been caused by Rwanda and uh, when everything else has failed, it is Rwanda that must be held to account for Congo and, and so on and so forth. And it goes on and on and on and on with everyone. Even uh, uh, my friends uh, in the media and other places, people really who are even known and said to to be knowledgeable, to take their time and study cases and investigate and uh, interrogate things and, you know, they, they do that within academia or whatever, the political scientists. At the end of the day, it is, oh, if there is a problem uh, in the Congo, uh, well, and there have been problems for so long, go to Rwanda, find, ask for, you know, ask questions there and hold this one and is responsible for it, and so on and so forth. And even if um, 
there, there was to be a responsibility. I, 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 maybe we would need to say, well, this is really Rwanda's problem, uh, but the rest is Congo's problems. Uh, but no, there is not, nothing like that. It is all problems are Rwanda's problems, and, and Rwanda actually has a responsibility for it. So when you say are there issues, there are issues. There have been issues for so long. And the understanding of that, the definition of that, so distorted, so confused. And I also see um, running away from issues. Uh, I think Rwanda has more or less become uh, a convenient way uh, for people to, to try and explain away their responsibilities, either to do something in the Congo or, you know, to be seen to be trying to contribute to it. And so if it fails, then it is Rwanda, it is not them, then, and so on. So everything, even if there was to be any, any responsibility for, for Rwanda's part, uh, then that, you know, makes it easy for everything to come uh, and, and be put on the shoulders of Rwanda. Now, let me take a little time, if you bear with me, to say, talk about uh, the current situation, which really surprises me, and I put it straight and this way. You know, if you are honest, people have been following this situation. It's not so long ago. Well, we had what we had in the mid-90s onwards, you know, 2000, early 2000s, and so on and so forth. And then recently, just um, maybe let, let me start from 2009, where we had these uh, issues in Eastern Congo, and we tried to, you know, again, under the same uh, false presentation of the problem, but nonetheless, we remained engaged. In fact, we tried to be helpful, uh, and, and, and here, if you remember, we have a situation here which we are still stuck with, of a person known as Roran Hunda. You've heard of that. We've had to bear every responsibility for, for, for him, for that situation that created him, and so on and so forth. And we accepted it. We put it on our shoulders. But hoping that, one, it helps two situations. One, to deal with the Eastern Congo problems, uh, generally for Congo, but also result into a solution for our problem best there, you know the genociders who are staying there. And it was like we were even buying cooperation in that situation of the Congolese government or even of international community so that actually our problem is also dealt with. And if you remember here, the UN that is best in the Congo, if you remember the background, the MUNISC that is there, why it came there? It was largely because of the problem relating to genocide and the perpetrators of genocide, as well as, you know, contribute to stabilization of Congo and so on and so forth. Uh, with the history of that, that I don't have to, to dwell on so much. But if you look at from that period onwards, which I, again we we'll talk about. You look at what this UN is doing that would explain why the international community thought about having this presence and a very expensive presence, and you don't see the results. At least I don't. Maybe in our discussions, you let me understand this. I don't see anything that I would pay for even one dollar. And they pay 1.2 billion every year. 
for doing nothing. And then they turn around and ask Rwanda to deal with every problem that originates from there. Now, so we have this man Honda here, bearing all responsibility, legal and other cases. We are being accused every day. We are holding this man for, you know, you should not be holding him, da 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 da. At the same time, this world of hypocrisy, uh, you know, quietly is, is saying, yeah, you, you did the right thing to hold this man, to, to get this man out of this situation, and then, and then okay. You see, but we got nothing in the end out of it. Because we thought we would get peace in Eastern Congo, because that's what they said, and we had always been warning them that, you see, you want to deal with one man, this, but even if you went and killed him or removed him and, as we did and we have him here, you have not solved the problem because you are not solving the underlying problems in Eastern Congo or in the whole of Congo, which is a serious governance issue. Well, they didn't listen. We, we solved that. Now, the point I was coming to, during just a period before elections, during and after, in recent ones, in, in, in the DRC. This same so-called international community is all over the place. It's like they're asking, again, they are now coming to ask Rwanda, and they are, they are talking about it everywhere. It's like, oh, but this Congo, you know, this Congo, you know, these elections, do you think they would happen? Yeah, you know, but do you think this man, President Kabila, is really, you know, anybody to do business with? You know, he, he has failed. You know, he doesn't talk to us. We look for him, we want to talk to him, we can't see him. So, in the end, uh, the conclusion is, shouldn't he even be removed, either through elections or other means. I, I, I'm just going to spill some secrets to you to, today. And it is going on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> At the end of the day, they can't remove him as they wish. They can't do anything about it. He's elected. Whether they think fair or unfair or whatever, they can do nothing about it. Oh, now the some reality dawns on them, and they say, well, maybe we have to put up with this guy who doesn't talk to us and so on, because we like Congo. And they like Congo, but they don't like Congolese, for sure. If, if they liked Congolese, they wouldn't be, we wouldn't be having these problems every day of raping and killings and everything and, and, and silence over it. And just recently, and, and before I miss one point that is important, during this period they were asking these questions and planning all sorts of things. I don't think in this world there were more than maybe three to five countries in this world, I'm not talking about this region, that actually were coming out to say, but why don't you leave this situation to the Congolese? Why, why, why don't we? In, in fact, standing by this situation, or, 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 or by the Congolese, so that they sort themselves out. They are not, and those few included Rwanda. And the Congolese know it. But things changed so fast, immediately after the elections, now Rwanda becomes the villain in the situation. Now Rwanda must be... Now, the same people who are just there on the side plotting and asking and doing this and asking what can be done and saying this man doesn't talk to us, does da 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 and everything, all of a sudden they turn it around and they are back, they are the ones saying, we, 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 as of all, we are the ones who can save Congo. Since when? Now, and I think they do it so cleverly because they are complaining that they have no access to 
the leadership in the Congo and so on and so forth, so they buy access by some tricky ways I would attempt to explain this. The situation of 2009, as I talked about, which led to Munda being here as, and he's still here. Removing Munda was not supposed to be the only thing to do. There were other things that were agreed that should be done. And that was about the whole process of integration of these groups that were fighting. It's about recognizing the citizens of that country that have never been recognized and which keep developing into these problems. It was resolving all those issues, and those issues can only be resolved by the Congolese. It's not by Rwanda, it's not by anybody else. Now, this whole process doesn't happen the way it should happen. So, in the middle of it, the international community starts moving around. Before we realized, they came to us, and they were saying, you know what? There is this man, Bosco, who must be arrested. This man in Haganda, Bosco. He said, oh, fine, that's your business. Do you want to arrest him? Go ahead and arrest him. If you have reasons for which you're arresting him, why would you even need to ask us? Go ahead, go on with the Congolese and... Uh, it's like, you know, but we can't do that without the consent of Rwanda. <laughs> Very silly stuff, honestly. And now this is the point again. Rwanda, uh, there, is, there is a responsibility we cannot run away from, or, or, or there is an accusation that is going to be there forever that we cannot escape, but for the wrong reason. These Congolese, I, I've had some, some phrases used about them. They call them Rwandophone. Rwandophone is the meaning uh, Congolese of Rwandese origin. I mean, of Rwandese, what do they call it? Uh, and anyway, they are Congolese, but somehow they have blood in them running from Rwanda, but I don't know. I, and I'm not responsible for this. No, Rwanda is not responsible for how these Congolese went, or, or, or Rwandese happened to be in the Congo and live there and have to be called the citizens of Congo. I have simply, and this Rwanda has no responsibility for it. Somebody else has responsibility for it. How these Rwandans went to be Congolese I cannot explain. It's none of my business. I don't know about it. I have no responsibility over it. So, if somebody therefore is going to say, oh, there are these Rwandis in the Congo who are supposed to be Congolese citizens, whatever they do, whatever they don't do, whatever they say, uh, reflects what Rwanda thinks and what Rwanda is doing, and so on and so forth in the Congo. Now, there is, there is nothing we can do about it. If there is anybody who can do about it, they are, it's those who created that situation. Do, do they want to supplant them and bring them back here to live in Rwanda? Let them go ahead and do it. Are there grounds to treat them as citizens of that country? That's fine, they should look at it and see the merits of it. And accept. But we cannot have a situation where it is neither this nor that. And in the end, that you should hold Rwanda responsible for. So, they go on and on and say, oh, but, uh, and, and we tell these people, we say, you know what? For us, don't ask us anything to do with the Bosco and Haganda or with any go and ask the Congolese and deal with the Congolese, go and deal with the MONUSC which you created and put there and was supposed to resolve some of these issues. Don't ask us anything. It's none of our business. 
And however, we also reminded them, we said, you know, we have had a situation for the last 18 years. We have had a genocidians in the Congo. You know what they do every day you write about it. You talk about how they rape even Congolese, they kill Congolese, children, and everything. But you do nothing about it. This is what you should be discussing with us because those are Rwandis and we have tried to have this problem addressed, but you are not very helpful. You know where Mudachumura is sitting in his headquarters in eastern Congo. You know we, we give them names. We say, we, you know all of this. You are not, you've never come to us to say, this is how we should deal with the matter. Now, you ignore all that and come and say, start asking us about Bosco and Haganda. Now, on this, these same people who are complaining about having no access to present career, and so they created now a very good reason to have access. Because they would go to present career and say, you know, we can help you with this man who is after all, first of all, we helped you by uh, making sure that ICC is interested in him. So ICC should be having that man with them and lock him up for you. Uh, now is the time we can actually now arrest him for you. Oh, so now a deal started developing. It was right. We will arrest Naganda for you so because you need him arrested because you know he, he's uh, uh, not responding to your command and so on and so forth and and he needed it. And somebody in the Congo needed it. Uh, but again, so they started scratching each other's backs. Uh, we, and, and that started creating a way to start talking to each other. Now people who did not have access to the leadership in the Congo started that doing it because they were presenting how they would help in this case that they wanted to sort it out. Because what was it? They were saying they wanted they would, during the process of integration which was not completed in the Congo, they would want to transfer Soldiers who, are, who belong to CNDP to other parts of Congo, which ordinarily is what should happen. And these integrated soldiers would say, no, we are not going anywhere. We will stay in our place of birth because we feel insecure when we are taken to other places. And there, was, there is a case that has never been reported and explained, surprisingly again, out of this conspiracy of silence. Some soldiers were taken from Eastern Congo of this, this other background, the Rwanda phone something, uh, transferred to some uh, place in North uh, West and they were all killed instantly, fifth of them. And now these people are saying, look, oh, so if we are transferred and if the process of integration is supposed to work, when we are transferred, we, we are killed because of who we are. So we, we will not go anywhere, we will remain here, we will serve in them, but we won't leave this place. Ah, and, and, and they thought they would overcome that problem of integration and therefore having all soldiers respond to command equally well and therefore by saying, you know what, this is happening, instead of really sorting out this issue, they started by saying, you know, uh, let's arrest this commander, or one of the commanders of theirs, and the soldiers will start responding. But the soldiers were not going to because of this other problem that everybody has kept quiet about. 
and I'm sure in this room people know about it. But it is always not talked about. Now, and then the whole issue starts building up. And when we learned about it, when the, we discussed it with the Congolese, we said, what can we do? Because for us, again, the main focus is on continuing to have good relationship with the Congo and to continue to work with the Congolese so that we resolve our problem that still remains best in the Congo, and that is of these FDRR, these genocides in the Congo. That's our best main interest. Now, in this fighting for all kinds of things in the Congo, among the Congolese, now the whole world and the Congolese are saying, no, the problem is Rwanda. Yeah, how does the problem become Rwanda? How? Hey, so we, we tell these people, first of all, you, you were running around saying you want to arrest somebody, da, 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 and we, we were even asking, at what cost are you going to do that? We have, even if it hasn't worked properly, this process of integration and stabilization of Eastern Congo was working well. Now you are plunging into it and turning it upside down again. Do you realize the consequence? And it's like, no, 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 but you see we have, you know, accountability, we have to hold this man accountable, but you are holding this man accountable and turning the whole of Eastern Congo population upside down and messing it up and opening up the old wounds and just, you know, it's, it's really annoying. It's, it's not only wrong, and, and everybody now people are just fisting, writing, articles and blaming everyone say, oh, this man, Bosco, we saw him in, in Musanze drinking in a bar and da, 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 da. Very stupid stuff. You would not expect that anybody with grey matter between his ears can be talking about. But that's what goes on with this whole world. Now, but ultimately, uh, and maybe again the last question, ultimately, it, it, we will be forced into a situation where we just draw a line and say, well, if you don't even want us to be useful, if you don't want us to participate in finding a, a solution, and you are just creating false grounds to blackmail us, we don't respond to blackmail. We don't at all. So we, we, we will draw a line. And say, okay, forget about us, and forget about us in the Congo. We will deal with matters just on, the, on this side. Whoever finds us here, we will fight. Fight it out. And forget about FDRR, forget about Bosco, forget about all the rubbish. And in the end, we are coming to a point where if this nonsense continues of putting blame on, 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 on one hand, you want Rwanda to, to, to be helpful, on the other, you want to put all the blame on their sh our shoulders, we will offload all these problems that are being put on our shoulders and throw them back to them. And one way of doing it is, I hope it doesn't come to a point where we will even wind up and say, take this man, even the one we are holding here, and, and think on grounds of like, we are really buying our peace. It's, it's like we, we, we are doing it even when it is wrong just because we want peace with, with everybody who, who are having problems with us unfairly. So we will say, take this guy or, or we will tell him, go wherever you want to go. 
and leave this place because we have no grounds to be having this situation. So, uh, Rujendo, those are some of the issues. Uh, I haven't said enough of them. This I have said is just a small bit of it. But I thought maybe it, it, it would put us somewhere in terms of understanding what the issues But Congo's problems should stop being our problems. And the international community, so-called, should take their responsibility and... Uh, All right, let, let, let's have another set of questions. So we'll have Philip, and then we have uh, one there, and then uh, Pierre. Mr. President, Philip Gravich, um, I, was, I wanted to follow up a little bit on a couple of the things about uh, this Congo situation. Um, the peace that had been established over the last three years and uh, was holding was understood from the start, as, a, as you've described it, as a, as a question of, with this ICC warrant hanging over, a stability was more desirable than allowing the execution of this warrant. The way you're describing the breakdown that we've seen in the last few months of the relations between Rwanda and Congo, it seems to be that what you're saying is, we had finally established a relationship where we're talking to each other without interference. And through that, we had established a situation full of flaws, bad integration, many things that hadn't happened, but that it had created a stability and a peace. But the international community, and as you say, we don't always know who that's talking about, for instance, I would be very curious to know who asked you about the possibility of removing Kabila by other means. Uh, I, I can't imagine it was a UN resolution. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, so it, it seems like what you're really saying is that it's a kind of international meddling has broken that down and that, that triangulating off these people, you're no longer talking. But what you reach at the end is the possibility of saying, fine, if it's broken down, we'll leave it broken down. It sounds like you're saying there's, if there's nothing to talk about and uh, we will leave all these problems to Congo. And to the international community. But one of those big problems is and has been, as you've said, the situation of the Banya Rwanda in Congo. You've had a flood of refugees. You've had a flood of refugees into Uganda. And although Rwanda's various reasons for being in Congo, it hasn't been front and center, there has always been a sense that if they're being attacked, if there are genocide there attacking them, if there are Congolese who are driving them out and attacking them and massacring them and stripping of them of their goods and of their nationality, uh, that's a concern for you. That is a concern primarily and should be of the international community. Well, but they seem to have been quite content to ignore the 55,000 you've had here since the last 15 years. And I'm wondering, yes, and, how, and, do you, and, how do you propose withdrawing entirely from engagement with Congo and dealing with... Uh, the consequences of that as it would affect that quite large community which would probably be in dire straits and want to come here. Yes, but, uh, 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 but the answer lies in what I said. We have to come to a point where the issues in the Congo, whether they involve these Rwandese who are Congolese and so on, doesn't become our responsibility but the responsibility of the international community, even if they have failed to do it. But that's where the responsibility lies. It's not with us. And worse still, it cannot be that the international community will now turn around and actually start believing or even acting like it is our responsibility. It's all I'm talking about. Yes. And second, what I'm trying to say is what is going on in the Congo should not actually be seen or construed to be any problem between Congo and Rwanda. It's a problem within Congo and the different shades of Congolese. This is what I'm saying. This is how it must be seen and understood because that's what it is. And in fact, we tell whoever cares to understand, including the Congolese, that you Congolese don't run away from your responsibility and start also 
playing like this is our problem. <laughs> or that it is a problem of communication between us and you. No. It's a problem between or of breakdown of communication between you and your people. <laughs> you see what I mean? For us, we are only in to be part of a solution because ultimately it benefits our problem that we want addressed best in Congo. You see what I mean? I do, but if I may for just one second. I, given your view of the so-called international community, putting the problem of the Banya Rwanda uh, on the international community sounds like condemning them to a rather grim fate, wouldn't you agree? Yes, but do you also see a situation where we have to keep having a conflict between Rwanda and the international community? This is, this, this is, this is the dilemma we are putting. How, how can Rwanda take on the international community and remain in a fight with the international community? This is what I'm trying to even run away from. But of course, does it create problems for these people at all? Absolutely, it does. But at the end of the day, maybe there will be a point where the international community will stand accused of actually being responsible for the plight of these people. And they don't want to have anything to do with the accusation where Rwanda is accused for being a problem to the Congolese or even to these, Rwanda, these members of this community. This is, this is the, the delicate line we are trying to negotiate. Yes. Uh, uh. Um, th thanks, Mr. Hi. President. Hi. This is Isaac Mangena from E! News Channel in Johannesburg. Um, you, thanks for, for spilling the beans, as you said. Um, I just want a quick, quick question. Um, you, you sounded very much annoyed by the whole accusations uh, against Rwanda. Not even accusations. This, this situation. The let situation, me, Let yes. me put it this way. Yes. The accusations will be there, they have been there, it's not that. It's really the, the, the actual thing. That, okay. You know. can, can, can you expect to, to, see, to, to, to see this coming to a point where Rwanda is sending troops uh, to the ground in the, is the DRC? That's one. Two, um, what just, is that? I don't understand. No, like sending your men, like boots on the ground in, in the East DRC to try and find a final solution for this? But, but you, yeah, sometimes Again. you also ask questions for the sake of asking. I'm, I'm, I'm even talking about actually withdrawing our cooperation. <laughs> you, you wouldn't do that and then want to send troops. I, I, I actually want maybe some point where we would have nothing to do with the situation of Congo and leave it to the Congolese and to the international community to sort out. Hmm. Right? So how does that bring in sending troops? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, we go to the next question. No, no, let, let, let him uh, feel comfortable. Maybe he has some follow-on question. Sorry, a microphone, please. No, I just, I just wanted to, you know, just as a follow-up to all the... The, 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 the DRC problem. But then another question basically is about the, the success of the Kashasha and obviously you have been one of those African leaders who, are, who, are, who have strongly criticized the ICC as a solution for African problems. Um, what's your view? Do you think the way Rwandans dealt with their issue can be done in other African countries and what's your point on the issue of uh, Omar al-Bashir and Malawi refusing entry and all that kind of a thing? Thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Let me start with a one. I think the Bashir and the Malawi and so on and so forth. First of all, uh, uh, I've been reading for, for Malawi to not be able to host uh, this AU summit. I think let's be realistic. It's actually because they were unable to host it. As one, whether one of the reasons, additional reasons, is, is uh, uh, playing it safe and, and coming out nicely, 
It was because they, they, they didn't want this that you had. That's another issue. But I know they were also not have. They were also having problems with being able to host it, and and for good, understandable reasons. In fact, I would even have advised them that maybe following the, the unfortunate incident where they lost the head of state and the changes and the situation the country is in, maybe it wasn't even the right thing. That's my personal take on it. And for ICC, again, let me... <laughs> uh, there are many sides to it. Some of them are my personal views uh, that I have held but made public and so on and so forth. Let me tell you, in 2000, and two, I had a discussion with some of these people who came to be leaders in, in the ICC and so on and so forth, because there was a discussion I had with the people in Stockholm who were having a conference of uh, human rights, which brought up these, you know, kinds of mechanisms, ICTR, ICC was, you know, being created and thought about and so on. And I, 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 for me, just out of, you know, I th what I thought was a good argument, I was telling people in that conference that, you see, it's not, it's not so much that we need to create new institutions as we need to actually make the existing institutions work. You see, we have things, we have created institutions, we have created all sorts of things that in the end don't work, and we, then we start creating new ones thinking we are solving the problem. And the new ones we create end up working like the old ones that have not worked. You see what I mean? And I was saying, in, in, in dealing with international justice, that's okay. This idea of creating ICC and putting it operate and so on may be good, but is it not going to confront the same failures as the others that exist that actually end up not serving the purpose they are created to serve? This was my argument. The other thing was I mentioned that I know for sure that this thing that you are going to create will actually end up being um, a court to try poor you know, people from uh, this group of banana republics. Yes, this is what I told them. That was in 2002. The ones they called that. That's what it is. Yet, as we know it, even if we don't want to believe it, all these problems you see even in Africa or elsewhere, they don't just happen on the hands of these Africans alone. They include, you know, <laughs> whether subtle or other ways, it involves some, but some of those are exonerated from being held accountable by some of these institutions. That was my take then. Now, come 2010, I met some of these people again. That was eight, nine years later. And I said, can you prove me wrong? Right? Yes, I said, prove me wrong. And they couldn't prove me wrong, at least in our discussions. And what has it come to be? Uh, uh, let me sound cynical a little bit. So how, how, what has it turned out to be, in my view? These are just institutions created, again, for management of these uh, <laughs> uh, poor countries. That, they must be managed all the time, eh? whipped in line when there is a problem here, you know, even before you understand the root causes of these problems, you, there is a, a scare coming, there is a whipping. You say, oh, no, so and so is coming. Ocamp is on the way, he's coming, you know? Uh -huh. And then people start, <laughs> because this prosecutor is coming. 
But that's not a way to resolve some of the problems are very serious problems. They have, you just need to attend to the very things that are there. Um, so, and, and, and if you look at situations, at least from my standpoint of looking at these things, some of the, if you look at how this, this is now working, it is working in a way selectively actually. You have a situation where there may be so many people are doing wrong things, uh, they, they will select who the, the easier and the softer target and the individual and deal with that and leave even worse people to go on. Uh, but they, and they think they have resolved the problem, but you haven't resolved the problem. Uh, or like in some situations in some countries where this is now being used to, 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 to actually determine the fate of a nation <laughs> by, <laughs> you know, saying we're interested in you, we're interested in you, and they are picking people who maybe have some aspirations there and lining it up so well that maybe they determine who comes out. That's why I said they may be cynical a little bit. But, but that's from a distance, that's how I see it. And I, and I really believe some of these things. And um, that's why for us we... And, and this thing should, should stop because, <laughs> you know, uh, I think we, we, we are probably dealing with a much bigger problem than we, we know. You know, let me tell you, if, if you are really telling me that this is, you know, something independent that, you know, is supposed to operate fairly and so on, at the end of the day, you see governments through different channels uh, trying to speak for this institution, telling other government, you know, you must sign to this, or, or even they try to, in some way, use some varied... Now, if it is independent, why, 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 why do you come to... Why, why do you have, you know, a government speaking to me, urging me to, as if it is your thing? Huh? <laughs> you know, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I, I was just, before I came, I was listening to news and, and following, and I saw, I'm sure you are following G20, right? Uh, summit going on. And I was seeing uh, somebody from Europe, very angry and rightly so, saying we have not come here to... to to learn lessons, you know, just complaining because they are being pressured into doing something and being given lessons. Ah, and I, I was really laughing, and I said, oh, so they, they are also hurt by giving, being given lessons. <laughs> and I was saying, so that how, that's really how it has. <laughs> so I, I was saying, so we, we are gradually uh, being treated the same way that... that uh, You've been treating us, so I was really enjoying it, you know? <laughs> yes, so that, that's how it hurts, <laughs> to be given lessons. <laughs> so I think we need to just learn from each other and speak to each other and argue and, and also understand that we can be responsible people as well, isn't it? Okay, I have a question, Mr. President, since uh, I cannot be seen from this angle. Let, okay. <laughs> let me select myself. Um, <clears throat> my name is Andrew Mwenda. I'm from the Independent in Kampala. If somebody was a student of geopolitics, their first concern would be these uh, militias in Congo who are Tutsi, 
share a common ethnicity with the leadership in Rwanda. They face a common existential threat of uh, FDLR and uh, other Congolese communities that want to exterminate them. It is, uh, they also create a buffer between uh, Rwanda and FDLR. And therefore, it is in the vital strategic interest of the Rwanda government to actually prop them. So if they are surviving, from a geostrategic point of view, really Rwanda must, has a vested interest in supporting them, financing them, and arming them. And if they are active, then Rwanda must be involved. And since Rwanda, many of them were trained by, from Rwanda here, so there is a historical linkage, there is ethnic linkage, there is a historical linkage, and then there is a strategic need to support them. So from that, if I was an actor in the international community, I would do, uh, assume that President Kagame has a hand and can easily control them for, for us. So when the international community say, why do you think they should believe that you are not, your government is not involved actively, oh. given those reasons, in helping Intaganda and his people? Okay, it is simple, Andrew. Rwanda did not only help and train those you call Tutsis, even those in the government on the other side. Right? Yes, from the top. <laughs> they were here with us. So why aren't we seeing that we are actually helping them? You know, there is... <laughs> so with them, in Kinshasa, you don't share common ethnicity. Sorry? You don't share common ethnicity with them. Well, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but but, but uh, I have also heard of those accusations, after all. <laughs> uh, secondly, let me say this. In fact, it is not true, because, again, this is where falsehood comes up. In this, this uh, rebellion you are talking about is not just by Tutsis, right? No. Even uh, maybe a, a little bit of background again. Uh, during the CNDP problem and integration with the government, there were actually groups, two groups that were supposed to be inter integrated. One was the group of CNDP, right? which was largely known to be Tutsis of Congo. The other was another group called Pareko. I don't know whether people have heard about that, which is largely Hutus. That is in Eastern Congo. Now, if you investigate properly, what I have heard is that this rebellion now combines the two. Pareko and the CNDP are together in that, this current rebellion. And not only that, this time it was in public domain, these other groups, these other tribes have also joined them. Right? So it means the problem is much bigger than just the two. Thing that people keep talking about. And maybe that validates my point that the problem is not just this small thing that if you remove, even if you removed these Tutsis, all of them, and, and brought them here because the, one thinks they belong here, I don't think you'd have addressed even a bit of the problems in the Congo. This, this, this is the truth of the matter. Okay, so next we'll have, uh, we'll take Pierre, Alex, Albert, and then uh, Reuters at the back. Mr. President, I'm Pierre Boisselli from Jeune Afrique. Um, my question will be on the relationship between, between friends and Rwanda. Between? France okay. and Rwanda. Right. Uh, but first I'd like to uh, come back to the matter of Congo and ask you I, a precision. I thought you were done with it, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, just a short precision. Can you be specific on the programs you are considering dropping in case the accusations against Rwanda? The what? The, the programs you said you programs. were... Programs. Yes. 
of collaboration. You said you were considering to drop in case the accusation against Rwanda went on. Mm. No, I, I, I was saying, you see, you can't be, uh, be involved in a, in a process where you are trying to find a solution and, the, and, 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 and that story you are focused on. And at the same time, this is not uh, seen as such, and you are actually accused as the source or the cause of the problem. And then you continue as if nothing has happened. This is really what I'm trying to say. Uh, and um, the outcome can, come, can be in, in different forms and shades. That, 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 that's all. You said the other part of the problem was? Not of the problem, the question. Yes. Um, so uh, I would like to know um, about the relationship between Rwanda and France. Ah, okay. Yeah, but, uh, with, the, w with the new administration, um, I wanted to know whether you had, uh, the Rwandan government had contacts with it uh, yet and uh, how you anticipate this relation to evolve in the, in the foreseeable future? I hope, I hope the, the relationship will continue to evolve positively as it had started a couple of years back. We, 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 we had no strong or specific contacts with the new government, but we have developed good contacts with, with, with France. Let me put it this way. I'm sure some of them will probably be or are in the government, others outside the government. And I think, I, I hope our relationship won't just uh, depend on the fact that there, are peop there was a different government yesterday, today there is another one, and therefore we start, we, we abandon what the positive uh, aspect of the progress that, uh, and, and of the process we were involved in. I, I'm hoping that things will continue even with the new government. That, that's the way I see it, and, and that's, I'm looking forward to that. Am I see very bad? I'm French. Uh, with uh, your permission, I can speak in uh, French to be clear. Monsieur le Président, je suis Alex de France Inter. Somebody, then you have a translator here? So we have some... Uh, some of this? Yes, sir. Is it, why, why, channel, why, why channel doesn't five, somebody sir? translate? Sure, yes. Open it so that uh, when I answer, everybody is, is also clear. I'm, I'm answering the question that was asked, not a different one. <laughs> yeah. Somebody should, should help us. Je, bon, en fait, je suis Alex de France 24 et Vox Africa, je travaille pour les médias. Monsieur le Président, c'est par rapport au Congo, je reviens un peu. Vous avez expliqué hein, que le Rwanda n'est nullement impliqué dans ce qui se passe au Congo aujourd'hui. Mais euh, les Congolais, en fait, les autorités congolaises, ne veulent pas l'entendre de cette oreille. Dernièrement, ils vous ont encore accusé d'être à la base de ce qui se passe à l'Est actuellement. Est-ce que vous prévoyez Euh, une rencontre avec le président Kabila, par exemple, et le gouvernement congolais, pour essayer de mettre au clair les, la situation, afin que plus jamais ce genre d'accusation ne revienne. C'est la première question. Excusez-moi d'ajouter une deuxième question. C'est un rapport avec la politique interne rwandaise, excusez-moi. C'est un rapport avec euh, euh, Mme Ingabire, qui est aujourd'hui en prison. Est-ce que vous pensez euh, qu'il est possible de revenir sur ce problème d'une gabirée, les traiter à fond, vouloir comprendre ce qu'elle veut et discuter avec elle. Par exemple, parce que euh, elle représente quand même une opinion, même si elle n'est pas très répandue au Rwanda aujourd'hui, mais cette opinion existe, causer avec, avec euh, cette, cette opinion, voir ce qu'ils veulent et essayer de trouver une solution à l'amiable. Le Rwanda a prouvé qu'il qu peut trouver des solutions au problème avec les Gachacha, qui a jugé plusieurs personnes. Est-ce que pourquoi on ne peut pas aussi trouver une solution assez euh, forte par rapport à la situation de euh, Mme Ingabire. Merci. How many questions are those? <laughs> so, uh, this is Alex from uh, France 24 and Africa, Vox Africa. 
He, will, he, he says you explained that Rwanda is not involved in Rwanda. Uh, in Rwanda that, is not involved in Congo. Uh -huh. But the Congolese do not want to hear this. They're, they're convinced that Rwanda is involved. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans to meet with President Kabila and the Congolese people? We also have, even now, we have people on the ground in Kinshasa, as we have had other, we have had other meetings where Congolese have been here a couple of times. Uh, so people are talking. We, we, we really want to make sure we understand each other on, on issues, on the main issues, the, the, the cause, the effect of the problems and the possibility of uh, uh, us contributing to a solution. So the, the discussions are, are ongoing, there's communication going on at different levels, and um, I hope we, we can probably uh, have reason to prevail and, and get some good. Uh, so you, you mean you will help him because maybe he missed the first part. Can, can you, somebody needs, no, no, there is a, something he missed at the beginning. Somebody needs to explain and then maybe use the translation later on for the second question. So can somebody help him maybe on the first part of the answer I had given? Alex, you have understood the first question, the first answer. You have understood? Yes, I understand. But somebody can try and summarize for him. No, no, say it. They are translating for him into French. No, but he hadn't used this. They are telling it to him now in French. So they are repeating what I said earlier. Perfect. Um, so for the DRC, I think there is a good process ongoing. We are talking at different levels and we are finding a solution. Now on this other second question, I would have even preferred to ignore it and just leave it for to remain a, a matter of where uh, justice has to be seen to be done as the process is ongoing, the issue of Ingabire. And um, uh, his opinion, the one who asked the question, is that uh, Ingabire represents uh, a voice of some kind, which would mean maybe anybody represents a voice of some kind. Anybody. Uh, you know, even uh, if you had uh, armed robbers, people who shoot people on the streets for money, uh, and grab the money and take it away and even maybe kill people. And then if the police arrested them, somebody may say, you know, I'm doing this uh, in the name of uh, people who are poor. When you are poor and you have nothing to eat, you can go on the street and, and, and kill people. And So he said, I'm doing it uh, in the name of so many. So that may then actually legalizes criminality of some kind. Now, if you don't know a little bit of history of Rwanda, or unless something is wrong and it gets lost on, on, on people, yes, uh, these people who co committed the genocide here, on, on, on whose hands we lost one million people, they were actually saying they, they had a voice. They were speaking for the majority of Rwandans who 
thought in any way they are threatened and or by another section of our population and therefore this section of the population should be killed uh, and people should get rid of them and that's the opinion. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe you need that going on everywhere, even where you come from. Maybe you need some people being tired of others and saying, we don't want these people so we can carry out a genocide against them because that's the opinion of where those who want to carry out a genocide are coming from. I, I don't know whether this is the reasoning that he would say, you know, I'm representing the people and these people think the others are a danger to us and we should exterminate them for who they are and it's an opinion, it's a voice. So, let it go on. Is it, would you let it go on because it is a voice or this is a pure and simple uh, uh, serious criminality? So, uh, uh, therefore, I don't know whether you, you have sufficient information about this case, and this is why I was saying I would have left it just to be a matter of the court case where it is already and, and uh, be treated as such. Uh, but there is sufficient evidence, witnesses, facts, to show that this case falls in the category I was talking about and uh, that, that underlies the tragedy we have had here in Rwanda. Maybe people from other places can afford to treat it uh, as simple as that. I, I don't know, but I'm sure if you experienced it in your own country, maybe you would not be talking about this. Mr. President, with your permission, maybe we'll take the last three to four questions. Sure. Yes. So we'll have Albert, then Ginny, and then we'll have uh, Reuters. No, but uh, I think let me have somebody direct in front of me here. Who has been? Sure. Go ahead. That's me? Yes. All right. I'd like to follow up a little bit on what you said earlier, and thank you for giving me the chance. You can't be spilling secrets and just crack the door open. Well, All right. It was a I public mean, secret. In it, it, so. Well, can you can you expand on it a little bit? Can you tell us a little bit about what means there were discussions about and what parties were uh, discussing this option? With about you? what? Getting rid of Kabila, of course. Sorry. Getting rid of Kabila. But. <laughs> Ah, no, I should be asking you. You people in the media know this. <laughs> Is there anything yeah. further you can expound on that, either the parties, the nature um, of the discussions and the possibilities? Uh, no, no. I, I, I think that is the farthest, the, the farthest I could go in terms of being uh, as open as I should. Okay. Well, in that case, let me follow up on uh, something that you said that sounded like a threat. Um, we were talking Sorry? about something that you said that sounded like a threat. You were to referring, you, well, this is my question to who. You said, uh, we're coming to a point, it sounded like you're coming to a breaking point, and we'll offload all the problems that are on our shoulders and throw them back. Yes. Who were you talking about specifically? Which kind of problems? The, and the other people who have no identity. Who but are you talking about countries? Are you talking about entities? Is the global community, the UN, Congo? I mean, there's a lot of parties. Who, whoever in the international community. You can't be slippery with the secrets and this. No, but <laughs> there is no, there's no secret about international community. When you, when you say international community, you know what I mean. Well, what do you mean by offering problems? Which problems specifically are you talking about? Are you talking about... Okay, let me, let me simplify Thank this. And I'm talking about s simply saying... Congo's problems should not be put on Rwanda's shoulders. Rwanda, we have our own problems to deal with, and we try to deal with them as best we can. And somebody should not just keep dumping problems from other places on our doorstep. This, this is what I'm talking about. Can we please get a microphone up there for Ginny, and then we'll come back 
I can, I'll turn this one, yeah. Um, Mr President, Ginny Stein from ABC Australia Television. Um, my question relates to Bosco and Taganda. What would removing him actually do to the situation in eastern Congo? I don't know, because I'm not responsible for Bosco and Taganda. He's Congolese, go and ask the Congolese. <laughs> sure, but the problems he's causing are causing problems for Rwanda. What's no, the, the, the problem is actually for Rwanda are caused by others, not even him. What secrets does he have? Why the reluctance on Rwanda's part? Why? And what secrets does he hold that stop Rwanda taking action against him when he was on go Rwandan and ask him. soil? Go and soil. ask him. Go and ask, or, or go and ask those people who have him. He's not here. He's in Congo. But He's not in our right hands point. that we are protecting him so that he doesn't spill secrets. Go find him where he is. Go ask Congolese and ask them what secrets he holds. He's not with us. You see, if he was being kept here and, and protected and shielded, then he would say, no, but you are doing it for some reason. But he's not here, so go find him where he is. If he crossed over, would Rwanda arrest him? No. Why isn't he being arrested where he is? Why do you ask me whether I would arrest him when he comes here? Ask those why didn't, if they were even interested in arresting him. Right? Now, l l let me speak to this. Even if there were accusations that, uh, you know, for six months in the air, he's in Rwanda, and for another six months over there, he's in the DRC, right? Why don't you ever ask yourself? Because we're not the ones looking for him. Why don't you ask yourself? Why don't those people who are looking for him, for any reason, arresting him when he's with them? But Rwanda is an international citizen. Rwanda... <laughs> You know, answers to the world. This is a very damaging situation for Rwanda. No, 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 but you're not answering my question. Damaging Rwanda for what? Of course, anything can be damaging to Rwanda if that's why we want to look at it. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. Why do you create a scenario, a situation out of Rwanda and bring it and put it on our doorstep just to cause problems? Why? I've asked you a question. And I wish you could listen or even tell you some of those people where you come from. Please. Bosco, you are talking about, I don't know why you are looking for him. That's, it's, and it's none of my business. I don't manage Congo. I don't manage Bosco. I have nothing to do with him. That's number one. Number two, the international community pays Monusk they have a force in the RSC. First of all, you should be asking yourself, what are these people there to do? You need to ask yourself that. Second, if you have a force there, and you have a government there in the Congo, and this is where this person is, why do you leave this place and come and ask for Bosco here? You must ask yourself that and answer yourself. Why do you, why, what is this obsession of always asking Rwanda, Rwanda, why are you ignoring these fellows where the problem belongs? So if I was in Congo, I would ask them in Congo that I'm here and, and the Human Rights Watch says he comes backwards and forwards. Rubbish with the Human Rights Watch. <laughs> yes, please, don't bring Human Rights Watch here in Rwanda. rubbish with them. Uh, we'll take our last two questions from Albert and then, and then Jenny. Uh, Mr. President, I'm uh, Albert Rudasimbo from Contact FM. Back to history, uh, 1st of July 2012, Rwanda will uh, somehow 
celebrate the 50th anniversary of independence and finds you in office. It's also the 18th year uh, of a reconstruction rehabilitation process that started in 94, bringing back dignity to this country. It's also the 25th anniversary this year of the movement that you are leading and you're a founder member. About legacy, about the future, with this past, and we know even Congo comes in in, in, in our past. And all. What is your stamp on that? What is your vision? What is your take on that? On? On this 50th anniversary and uh, knowing what, what, where we're coming from in, in, in Rwanda. Uh, and, and we can also already see that you're not celebrating this the way many other African countries have been celebrating this. Yeah, in, in some way, we, we, we are different. Um, we are the same and different. Uh, different because of all of this we are talking about and, and uh, what we've gone through. And, but we're going to celebrate it. And in fact, we can't celebrate it in the same way because we have even... A, different means to do that. Some people have means to celebrate even nothing. Just celebrate whenever they want. And spend. They have means. We don't. Uh, but we won't celebrate it uh, to, to at least to, to have uh, you know a moment of reflection and and, and call it independence and see through that and see how much of it has been independence and, uh, and even relate it to other situations uh, on our continent where we have similar situations and, uh, and move on. Uh, so 50 years, 25 or 30 or what, we, 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 we will see. It, it, it is a good thing for us to, to reflect on the meaning of it and, and we, we move on. And at the same time, uh, also, as you rightly said, after that we are going to have uh, 25 years of, of Rwandese Patriotic Front. Uh, it's another moment to say uh, what brought it to happen, uh, what has been done by the RPF, where, where are we coming from, where are we now, what remains to be done, and, you know, get a feel of um, the responsibilities we, we, we carry for our people and for ourselves. Uh, this, this is the way I simply look at it. No, but we, we shall have a, a very good day on the Independence Day celebration and a good evening maybe. Some dances, some singing, <laughs> some drinking, and, and uh, singing. And I think it will be good. We, we don't have planes for fly by and... So we, we, but we, we will have some good stuff. If you, if you don't mind, also about the content, now that we've reached this, this level and we know that some of the situations we're in today are because of the past. So there must be some kind of reflection. And yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. It will be a moment of reflection indeed. That's why there will be scholars and others who will we will have good debates about it and looking at different parts of uh, different problems and making sense of them and trying to understand what remains to be done and what, 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 how we need to go about it. Any other? Uh, I think the last question from Jenny. Thank you, Mr. President. Jenny Clover for Reuters. Um, you mentioned earlier Laurent Nguhunda. 
Excuse yes. my pronunciation. I I'm, just I'm, want... I'm surprised you pronounced it so well. Was that okay? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I wondered if you could just give us an update on his situation and whether he's still under house arrest. Yes, he's, he's, he's still confined someplace. Uh, but more importantly, there has continued to be engagement between Rwanda uh, officials and, and DRC officials until recently, and we are continuing to find uh, how we dispose of uh, this case. Hopefully, we, we should find a way out soon. We, we have really continued talking over this problem between uh, ourselves and uh, we have even brought in some third parties uh, who, who may help us. You know, let me tell you this again. At, the, at some point, as we've been discussing how we deal with this case, you know, some people came to us and said, you know, you hand this man over to, to DRC. And we said, well, no problem. But uh, we are mindful of the process. You know what? We want to hand this man over to you so that you hand him over to the RSC. And they said, no, 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 you, you, you do it directly. <laughs> and we said, no, but what stops you wanting to receive him and hand him over is what stops us from handing him over directly. <laughs> you see what I mean? You know, there are, there are these tricks really that people play, you know. We, we said, if there is nothing wrong, you, if, if you really think there is nothing wrong handing him over to the government in the RSC, then let's give him to you so that you do it for us. And since you are interested, because you have even come to us, to tell us what to do about it. Right? That, that tells you something. <laughs> yes. So that's why we, we want to talk and see how to uh, simply handing him over or letting him go. These are issues uh, that we need to... And this is why I'm saying there have been difficulties.